Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Nick's Missile 3. I am Patricia and I'm here with Admin James. So today we're going to be discussing about the next Nicktoon that would have had a theatrical movie but was eventually cancelled. It was the second Klasky Chupo Nicktoon in the form of Ah Real Monsters. So yeah, this movie would have came out a little bit later. It would have came out around 97 or 98. But unfortunately, it was canceled because it was deemed too scary for kids. Now, um, I tried messaging Peter Gaffney, the co-creator of All Real Monsters, to find out what the story was, but... Again, similar to when I messaged Bob Kemp, he just told me that they didn't get as far as what the story would have been, but... Um, he did tell me that they wanted to do some really risky things, and that was pretty much all I got. How come Arlene was actually concerned about, um, what the writers were doing in the early Rugrats days, and yet she didn't mind half of the edgy things that went on in that it work? Well, don't forget that this, if, believe it or not, um, All Real Monsters was the only Klasky Chupo Nicktoon that Arlene was not involved with, because... Gabor Chupo and Peter Gaffney were the ones who created All Real Monsters. And then later on, Arlene would be heavily involved with the other Nicktoons of the 90s. Maybe Arlene wasn't as focused with the show as much? I'm not sure. But yeah. Probably. I, either that or her st- or standards um, pretty much were lowered um, as um, the shows progressed. She was probably more lenient as it progressed. Possibly, yeah. So, um, yeah, All Real Monsters, it was the second Klasky Chupo Nicktoon created. It was uh, made in uh, 93, and yeah, in my personal opinion, it's heavily underrated. One of the least talked about Klasky Chupo Nicktoons. Not as underrated as, say, like, As Told by Ginger, but definitely overlooked, because... Um, I fe- in my personal opinion, after the success of Rugrats, I felt that Klasky Chupo was leaning more of trying to direct certain audiences and not a general one. Like, All Real Monsters were for the kids who liked monsters and gross-out moments. Rocket Power were for the kids who liked skateboarding, surfing. Extreme! Yeah, extreme kind of sports. As told by Ginger, were for the you know, the teenagers. The Wild Thornberries were for people who liked animals and nature shows. And All Grown Up was basically a continuation of Rugrats. So it caters to the fans. But I do know some people who actually watched All Grown Up before watching Rugrats, which is interesting. But anyway, Arrow Monsters. So yeah, um, the show lasted for a, a good couple of seasons. Um, and, and yet it's still not as regarded as what like one of the top Nicktoons compared to like, you know... Rugrats or Spongebob or Hey Arnold or any of the other Nicktoons that came out in the 90s. I have to say something. It's a shame that this show really doesn't get as much recognition as it should because, to be honest with you, if it wasn't for Rugrats, this would probably be my favorite class feature of Nicktoon. Yeah, it's definitely up there. I would have it as, like, number three as my favorite class key Chupo Nicktoon. Uh, That being with As Told by Ginger and Rugrats. But, yeah, um... Uh, There are some things about the show that are not for everyone, uh, I have to admit. For some people, it may be the gross-out moments. For some people, maybe they don't like monsters. But if you were to just, you know, take those away, it's definitely Klasky Chupo's most creative Nicktoon. It it takes you into this really dark, dirty, underground world filled with some of the most creative monsters ever. Now, you have to understand that... There have been shows based off of monsters going to school, like, you know, Groovy Ghoulies in the 70s and Gravedale High in the 80s. The only difference was was that those monsters were inspired by the universal monsters from the movies, like Dracula, Frankenstein, the mummy. But the unreal monsters were original monsters that you would wonder about how did they get created, who's genius yet crazy mind would come up with the designs for these things what do you think would have happened if this movie would have came out it would have probably um 
encourage uh, animated movies to go in a darker direction had it been a success. I definitely agree as well, because uh, when it comes to animated movies, this was when Disney wasn't doing very well. I mean, it wasn't like going bad or anything like it wasn't going on its downward slump like it would be in the early to mid 2000s when pretty much almost every single movie, with the exception of Lilo and Stitch, was a bomb. But it wasn't like at the high you know, like high praise point, like it was during its Renaissance era. So 98, you had movies such as like, uh, let's see, like Pocahontas already came out. Hunchback of Notre Dame came out. Hercules already came out. And 98 was when Mulan came out. So Disney was kind of like at the backside. Well, DreamWorks just started off with releasing Ants and Pixar released their second movie with A Bug's Life. So this is when the two of them started having their main competition. A Bug's Life. I remember when that came out. Love that movie. Yeah, I remember seeing both A Bug's Life and Ants in theaters. Um, I personally like Ants a lot more, but A Bug's Life is pretty good too. I and- didn't see I didn't see Ants in um, theaters, but I did on the VHS copy. I thought, in many ways, um, I think Ants was influenced by A Bug's Life. Yeah, there's a huge, huge debate about that because Katzenberg originally worked at Disney. He was fed up with Disney because he felt like he should have taken charge of being like the top man of the animation section, but he didn't. So he left to start off DreamWorks and basically, you know, he felt that he was the one who came up with the idea of doing this bug movie. It's a complicated thing. Anyway, going back to uh, Aubrey Monsters, Goosebumps, the book started, you know, coming out like around the mid 90s and it i mean goosebumps fever was like everywhere i remember when i was a kid scholastic used to visit our schools and they would do like these huge book Seriously? fairs no no i'm not joking like when wow. I, yeah when i was a kid scholastic used to have these huge book fairs like they would come visit our schools like every couple of months and my friend used to buy the latest goosebumps books and that's actually how you know we first met um and even still to this day, I've been friends with him for 20 years. This is when Goosebumps was really hot. The Are You Afraid of the Dark revival happened. So it was still kind of like at the phase in which kids like scary things. So I think with Avril Monsters coming out in theaters and trying to be a little bit more edgy than, you know, what the Disney movies and um, what DreamWorks and Pixar were doing at the time, I think it would have been brilliant because... You know, something is scary to generate toward the kids who are getting into, like, Goosebumps. Um, I think it would have driven in a lot of kids to watch it. Maybe it would have given Avril Monsters more recognition than it does have now. Yeah, probably. I think that, I think that would have been a good idea. Um, it's a shame that it didn't catch on because with Klasky Chupo being as, um, being the monstrous animated, I mean, like, I don't mean monstrous as in uh, as in like the the monsters the heartless. I mean like big. I mean like monstrous as in big, gigantic company company that it was in the nineties. Well, why on earth did they not keep our real monsters as long as they did? Well, I mean, they did, I mean, don't forget, Avril Monsters did have a good run. It did run for, like, three or four seasons, so it it did have a decent run. You know, it's kind of funny because a lot of people, whenever they talk to me about As Told by Ginger, they say to me, oh, but Patricia, As Told by Ginger had three seasons, so it's not as obscure as you say it is. True. But let me just bring you up into perspective. The Mystery Files of Shelby Wu had four seasons. The Journey of Alan Strange had three to four seasons. And yet at the same time, I hear almost nobody talking about those shows because it was hugely overshadowed by Keenan and Kel, which that show also had four seasons. Now, don't forget that 1998 or, you know, 97 or 98 when, you know, they were planning on having this movie released, the Wild Thornberries came out. So I guess they had their major priorities of working on the Wild Thornberries as opposed to continuing, you know, with All Real Monsters, which they probably felt that it was already done at this point. And then a year later in 1999, that was when Rocket Power came out. So I felt that maybe that maybe that was partly the reason why that Klasky Chupo didn't want to dedicate too much on working on the Avril Monsters movie because they already had two shows back to back that they had to constantly work on. 
And then, not to mention, um, you know, as we mentioned before, All Real Monsters is not as well of a known show as, say, like, you know, the others. Oh, and, and lest we forget, 1998 was the same year that the Rugrats movie would have came out. So, yeah. Yay! I mean, I don't know if both of the productions of All Real Monsters and the Rugrats movie... Um, I don't know how, you know, good the quality would have been if they would have worked on both of those movies at the same time, but I guess I can understand, you know, which priority was the most important on, you know, what, you know, Klasky Chubo, uh, Nicktoon they wanted to make a movie out of, because, uh, as mentioned in the last episode, uh, when discussing about the rejected Ren and Stimpy movie, uh, when Rugrats, um, had the, uh, Hanukkah special come out, and it generated with a lot of praise, uh, that was when the Rugrats uh, revival happened, and then that was when the movie happened. So, with Rugrats gaining momentum again, then the creation of the Wild Thornberries in 98, Rocket Power in 99, so, I guess, the Our Real Monsters just became less and less of a priority. So, I guess I can kind of understand why it just pretty much fell through. Me too. In in some aspects, I'm I'm really sad that this movie never came out, but... Even if it did, um, I'm not sure if it was the right time for it because, um, you know, just as much as people, you know, back in the day loved Goosebumps, a few years later, you know, Goosebumps would kind of be tired out. Like, even in 2000, when R.L. Stein rebranded his books with Goosebumps 2000, many people were just out of it. And then that was when Animorphs started coming out in 1999. And then the Harry Potter books came to America in 1998. So almost everybody was kind of losing their, you know, interest in the scary books and then started getting into, like, the fantasy stuff with Animorphs in which you have these kids and they have to turn into animals to fight off aliens. Or with Harry Potter in which you have this wizard who has to be able to fight off the... um, evil wizard who killed off his parents and he goes over to this big wizard school and me me meets up with a whole bunch of friends and you have this gigantic wizard world i think after a while a lot of things tend to lose their popularity unless they have massive staying power yeah and even with those that have massive staying power they have to do a lot of things to um update and rebrand themselves so that they can be able to stay in popularity most of the times it doesn't work but at least you can't say that they didn't try but at least there's always an opportunity for them to try again. Like, you know, with Scooby-Doo. Uh, let's be honest, you know, some of the stuff in the 80s is not good. In fact, many people consider the 80s to be, like, the lowest point in Scooby-Doo history. But then, you know, lest we forget about Zombie Island coming out in, uh, let's see, it was in 2000, I think. Or, no, it, I think it was in 1999 or 2000 was when Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island came out. And then it pretty much just shook up the Scooby-Doo franchise because it was so much scarier and realistic than its previous incarnation. Uh, maybe it could have worked, but, uh, you know, for, uh, Our Real Monsters, if they wanted to go in this dark, scary direction for kids. But remember that Nightmare Before Christmas came out a few years prior, and it didn't become, like, the massive hit it, it is today. Back then... Oh. No, back then, it was considered to be, like, this scary movie for, for kids, and it didn't gain a lot of you know, momentum. In fact, Disney kind of slowly picked their name out of the, um, uh, you know, out of the, the building and they gave it to Touchstone so they can be able to produce the movie. But then when they saw around the 2000s when the huge fan base that um, Number Before Christmas gave, Disney decided like, you know what? Uh, let's re-release the movie. Let's bring it back to our name. Let's start selling merchandise and Hot Topic and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, it's kind of funny to look back on it, but still, uh, the point is, is that... Um, Our Monsters, I mean, in a marketing perspective, I don't think it would have, you know, maybe garnered, like, a huge amount of fans and viewers because it wasn't as much of a well-known Nicktoon as compared to, like, Rugrats. But I think under the surface, I think it would have been really brilliant. Now, um, how do you think this would have changed in the form of cinema? I do actually think that the show would actually work if it actually came out today, given the fact that... Most modern cartoons these days actually take on very serious subjects and actually tackle issues that even cartoons in the 90s wouldn't have tackled. Mm, Possibly. I mean, maybe today it could work. Like, um, you know, Laika has done really well with creating a lot of dark, tense movies with their animation, such as Coraline and Paranorman. And, um... 
you know, not to mention that uh, I think kids are a lot more open-minded to seeing a lot of more scary things. Um, maybe our I'll remind- tell you why. Why? The bar's, the bar's been lowered. Well, I guess you could say that. I mean, it, it, it's it's highly debatable, but I, 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 get to what you, I get what you're saying. If it would have came out in 98 or yeah, 97 or 98, I think it wouldn't have... I don't think it would have done as well. I mean, not as well as Rugrats, in which it made over $100 million. I think it wouldn't have done just as good as, like, say, Rugrats did. Do you have any other final words to say right before we go? I wonder if they're going to revive it as a TV movie. I don't... Uh, it, I don't... Um know whether or not they are actually going to because considering that um, however I've noticed something I know this might seem a bit off topic but Nickelodeon seems to be posting a lot of rocket power posts in correlation with their sports makes sense of course I mean what do you think they're going to post about their sports do you think they're going to be posting about skate TV <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The day that they post something about Skate TV is the day that they're going to post about, I don't know, um, uh, they're going to be posting about, oh, they're going to be ha- airing reruns of No One Knows Best, <laughs> which I doubt <laughs> at this point. Uh, anyway, yeah. but um, yeah, I really don't have too much to say about the topic either. All I have to say is, is that I'll remonster the movie. Probably would have been decent for its time. I don't know if it would have been a success uh, in the box office. Uh, I've noticed something. What? Even the Wild Thornberry seems to get more attention than um, our real monsters. Mm, yeah. I, I, again, as I mentioned before, with these kind of shows that the that Classic Chuba released after Rugrats, I mean, it's more for a specific audience. And the specific audience that Classic Chuba was trying to generate with Aura Monsters, it kind of died down around the late 90s. Like, nobody was trying to do the gross-out moments anymore. Everybody, I mean, it was, it was a lot more experimental, which I can give credit for that. And I guess because Crocodile Hunter and Tony Hawk was becoming popular around the late 90s, they decided to make shows based off of those things. So I guess I can understand why. Anyway, but... Yeah, me too. Okay, um, final word. Yeah, I don't think that this movie would have generated much buzz or money as, say, the Rugrats movie. It pro- it would have probably came out at the wrong time because, you know, Pixar and DreamWorks were doing a lot more groundbreaking stuff. I mean, with the popularity of CGI, I mean, I don't think Class Chippa would have done anything if they had to, you know, go through a CGI thing. I doubt it at this point, but it would have probably been looked old and antiquated trying to revive a, a Nicktoon that most people didn't really watch because they were busy watching Rugrats and other Nicktoons, but it wouldn't have probably generated a lot of viewers for this movie, but maybe today it could possibly work. But even then, Aura Monsters is still one of the least talked about Klasky Chupo Nicktoons. Today, maybe. Back then, I don't think so. Yeah, I agree. But um, I think in many ways, um, maybe it was actually for the best that our real monsters had a short run because basically its quality is untouched and we look and we can look fondly back on it no, we can look back fondly on it even though that's not as popular as say Rugrats or Hey Arnold yeah that's the one thing that I can give uh, our monsters credit for even though that its run was very short we can't say that it didn't do any crazy jumping the shark moments there wasn't any um, crazy things that they needed to add it in to make it relevant. At least it was a lot more consistent than, say, like, all the other shows that they had to do later on. There were no stupid character additions like what they did for Dill or Kimmy or Taffy, and there was no, like, um, you know, jumping the shark moments in which they tried to go in this different direction to try to appease to another audience. So, yeah, so along the lines, Ariel Monsters is still one of the most consistent Nicktoons that ever came out, so... Yeah, I forgot to actually say something. Um, did you know that Arlene Klasky is apparently back with Nickelodeon? I've heard that, yeah. Well, I mean, I do know um, that she is participating in that um, Nicktoons 25th anniversary um, uh, art gallery in California, alongside with uh, Vanessa Coffey and Jim Jenkins, so... Uh, that should be really interesting about... I, I wonder, um, how come they've got Jim Jenkins if Disney supposedly owns the right to dog? I have no idea. I still didn't even know the story behind that. But, 
Anyway, let's just wrap things up. It's a shame that they didn't do the Aura Monsters movie, but um, given the time period and the movies and the direction that Klasky Chupa was going at, maybe it was for the best. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, that is it for this episode. Tune in next time as we're going to be going into the live-action Nickelodeon shows with talking about a show that was similar to All Real Monsters in which it would have been so scary for kids that it eventually got canceled. So see you next time. So why does no-